Hey, thank you so much for joining us online today. We believe that God wants to use this message to speak directly to you. So as you listen, we want to encourage you, have an open mind and an open heart to hear what God's speaking to you. As well, you can access all the sermon notes from this message on our website and on our church app. morning Lakeshore and it feels like afternoon but today is the daylight savings that guys like me love so I'm not much of a morning guy so this gives me an extra hour to get a jump start on it so what a wonderful season we're in uh, our first service had like crazy overflow how many anyway it was like no seats and they had to put out extra seats and I wondered, I thought, did they get confused about At The Movies? Because we always have a lot of people come out during At The Movies, but it's daylight savings. So I do want to remind you that this year we're gonna be doing what's called a legacy offering on December the 2nd, uh, Sunday in December. And legacy is where we all come together as a church family and we go all in for a, an offering that we'll give away to three different lanes. First of all, next generation. We love our babies and teenagers here at Lakeshore Church. We want to make sure they get whatever they need, not just to participate in ministry, but to fulfill, to fulfill ministry. And then, as well, we have the Great Commission. When I first came here as pastor of Lakeshore, I found out they, they weren't giving any money to any missions or outreach. And I said, if I'm going to be pastor, we'll give 10%. Always of what comes in will go out to fulfill the Great Commission and help other people experience God. And we started that, we've never looked back, and we still do the same to this day. And then we have facilities and expansion to make sure that we're caring for the needs of those that, that God is sending our way. And so those three lanes we will fill with different opportunities and projects that you'll get to be a part of. So that second weekend in December uh, called our Legacy Offering. I'll remind you about it in the weeks to come as well. And now at the movies, we have an added service for all of you early birds and 8.15, there's 9.30, 11 o'clock and 12.30. I need your help. We'll have a lot of people coming in for these. And if you, if you bring like your neighbor or your guest, absolutely bring them to the, the prime time uh, times here if, if that's what you wanna do. However, I need to get as many people as possible to uh, attend 8.15 or 12.30. So if you come without uh, a guest, uh, 8.15 or 12.30 is a service for you. If you bring a guest, come on to the prime time. Because this will be difficult getting uh, all the people in that come during this time. At the movies, as you well know, is a time that's very touching, very, very powerful. The way our media department puts this together. I just don't know of a better way to share God's great news with hurting broken people. It, it's, it's magnificent. I know people say, oh, you're showing movies in church. It's a parable. It's a story. And this Sunday will be my overall favorite of the whole series. And I'm not just saying that so that we'll get a lot of people less this first one. I mean it. Don't miss it. Particularly if you have someone going through a really rough time, this Sunday would be a great time to bring them. So, all right, we're in the fifth and final service of this series that we're calling, let's talk about that. You put together the series during Easter and you said, I want to hear what the Bible says about five different topics. And so we've addressed all of those except for the last one, how to handle stress. You ready for this? So how do you address overwhelming stress in your life? And this really needs to be like two series long, 
But I'm gonna give you something today that I believe you're gonna be able to use, keep it on hand, share with your friends and maybe family members that are going through times of intense stress. Because stress is the emotional tension, the mental tension that you experience when problems come your way. That is stress. Physiologically, there's a response. It's not good for your body. Uh, you, you wanna live in a state of peace, not stress. So how do you deal with such high levels of stress that are in our world today? And things are getting worse, not better. Are young people in particular dealing with great stress? And I believe the reason why so many young people are on a lot of different meds and going to counselors for, for stress and anxiety. Because when your expectations are here and your reality is here, there's stress is what's in between. And, and, and that chasm, it, it's not closing, it's getting wider. So our young people are saying, hey, well I thought it would be like this, but yet I'm experiencing this down here. Whenever a young person has an encounter with God, everything shifts. I mean, expectations are still here, but an encounter with God will just transform everything. So, as I share today, I believe this could mean life or death. Life or death. So if please help me with distractions today, this is a very important message and uh, I want you to take lots of notes. Are you ready? How to address overwhelming stress. Five stages of a stress cycle. Now, stress, it, it has a cycle. If you understand the stages, you can observe and respond accordingly. Because if you respond in the wrong way, it will spin you off into a dangerous place. Being hard-hearted, mean, cynical, fault-finding, we don't want that. So here's the first stage, confusion. How many military personnel, first responders, police officers, firemen, EMT, how many first responders, doctors, nurses uh, in here? Would you raise your hand? We thank God for those that are out there on the front lines. You're facing stuff that I, I cannot imagine. And individuals that experience what's called post-traumatic stress disorder, they, life is different for them. They have been so affected by trauma that they require a lot of support in their life. And it's not something that goes away quickly. It's difficult. And this stress that hits at times as such is just overwhelming and it brings confusion. Like when the bomb goes off, everything is just disoriented. You don't know up from down, east from west, you just don't know. And so it's very important Never ever make life decisions, important life decisions, when you're in this stage of stress, the confusion part. The typical response of, of most people is this. Uh, again, God is not the author of confusion, but this is what God brings, peace. But this is what people do, particularly men. Man who say, I don't need a doctor, I don't need any help, I can do this on my own, uh, I, I made my bed, I'm gonna have to sleep in it. But the Bible says whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. This is the ESV, one of the best translations we have to this day. That he, he isolates himself and he breaks out against all wisdom. And when we get into confusion, having had something happen in life where we're shell-shocked, for example, number one stressor, the death of a loved one. A mother, a father, a child, an aunt and uncle, someone close to you, a best friend, a spouse, it, it, it'll just rock your world. It's like an explosion goes off and you don't know up from down. The, 
a divorce. A spouse walks in and says, hey, I just don't, I just don't want to be married to you anymore. And you kind of knew there were some signs, but it came out of the blue for the most part. And you find yourself in utter confusion. And the tendency is, is to go hide. Just take off. You tell someone, I gotta go find myself. You, you're gonna find more confusion if you do that. That's why we have small groups at Lakeshore Church that can help you, guide you, take you by the hand, help you up, and gently bring you into uh, uh, peace. And peace means wholeness. Uh, nothing missing or lacking, nothing broken in your life. That's shalom. And we pray for shalom here at Lakeshore Church, that your home would be a safe, stable, solid place with the peace of God. So again, incredible confusion that happens. Uh, I realize in this season, a lot of people have shifted jobs. That's a huge stressor. Or you've lost a job. It, it just unsettles, especially for men. Losing a job, that's your, your wellspring. That's, that, that's what you do. And individuals that have been diagnosed with a disease or an illness that's caused a lot of stress and, and worry. I just, I would imagine with a crowd this size, Many of you go home at night, you go to bed, but you really don't sleep. You don't find the rest that God has for you because it's just, it's, it's not intermittent, it's continual, it's constant, and you just can't turn it off. And again, I, I pray for you. We have something here at Lakeshore called Restore Groups where we take six weeks and we just go through foundations biblical foundations, and once you finish that course, we get you into a lane to get you healthy. But we have to begin with the Bible, and we need Bible foundations. In fact, if I'm talking to you, if you're one of those individuals who's living with high levels of stress, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, right here or in the student center, we'll be having one of those classes, and we have about 30 people, I think, that are a part of that, we'd love to have you just show up. Come on back over here to the student center, be a part of that evening. Here's the next thing, depression. So confusion gives way to depression. Um, I, uh, depression is hard to really put your finger on and diagnose because it, it's, it's odd, it, it, it shifts on you. And when you try to work one area of depression, the other just goes extreme, and you're like, I don't know what to do. But depression creates a joyless life. You can't experience real joy if you have depression or despair in your world. Where does it come from? The Bible says anxiety in the heart of man causes what? So it's worry. Uh, anxiety, stress causes depression. But a good word makes it glad. And that's why we're all about a good word here at Lakeshore Church. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Build one another up. Uh, having something encouraging for the person next to you. And uh, speak what we, we, we say it this way. Speak life, not death. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So a good word makes it glad. This is David, the psalmist David. Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You see, David was saying, look, I, I'm just, I don't, I can't get there on my own. I need your help, God. I, I'm overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock. And of course, the rock is a metaphor for Jesus himself. Lord, take me up. Let me spend some time with my Lord. And there's, we're so blessed here at Lakeshore to have phenomenal worship. I mean, it's different people every week and they all bring it. You know, it's like, wow, who is that? They're amazing. And so thank you for bringing such pure hearted worship here to Lakeshore. You can tell they're, they're not up here performing. They're having a moment with God and we get to get in on it. So take some time and overcome that, that gloomy, dark wor world with, with words of hope and life and anthems of praise. 
Listen to some worship music. So here's the next thing. It's, it's, if you're not careful, you'll come out of depression mad. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Mean, jaded, mad at the, word, at the world. These people are mad at you. They're mad at their parents. They're mad at God. They're mad at their spouse. They're just mad. Reason being, the expectations they had didn't even closely match up to the reality that they experienced in whatever area of their life that caused the stress. And we have a people on planet Earth today that says, I want justice, I want my due, uh, you owe me, I deserve this. In other words, this spirit of entitlement says, <laughs> pay me my money. And our, our parents and grandparents, they worked in situations unimaginable to be able to be where they are now. And although things have gotten easy, things have gotten more unhealthy. We have to learn how to thank God for our jobs, our income, learning how to honor God with our work in every area of our life. But you have to be careful or you'll get bitter. In 2008, my world was rocked. It's like a bomb went off right next to me and uh, my very best friend went through a tragic time in his life and uh, I still love him, but it was hard. And uh, Robert Morris from Gateway Church, he said, Brad, I, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, would you see my counselor, Pastor Tommy Briggs? I said, well, sure. I mean, I just did, I didn't even wanna eat food. I was just so depressed. So I went in and, and they're at the counseling office and, and they're playing some lively jazz music out in the hall. And so I walked in, I'm thinking, that was weird. So first thing he asked me when we're in the office, what do you think about the music? I said, well, I thought it was a little out of place. He said, well, let me tell you why I have it. He said, people that have a religious spirit always comment on the music. <laughs> Excuse me? He said, yeah, he said, just know this, that that religious spirit, it's one of the greatest hindrances for you getting healing. This is what he said, we're all human. We all make mistakes. Can we just let down our guard, take off our masks and get down to business? And, and so I began, I said, well, I, uh, my best friend of all of life, he went through this and it, I, I, I'm just crushed, I'm crushed. He said, I don't wanna talk about your friend. This session is not about him. This session is about what God wants to do in your life. And I'm like, wow. Well, I've been rebuked a couple times already. <laughs> I'm feeling better, I think. But what he was saying was this. You've been hit with something that has changed your world. And you're mad about it. You're bitter. You, you have a colder heart today than you did. You're less trusting than you were before. And I had to realize that is so true. That when you have a spirit of accusation come upon you, you do. You, you, you find fault with everything. You blame people that they're not to blame. And your heart becomes hard. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, here we have a case of that. I, I was in depression, I was grieving, and I got bitter. Do you know that bitterness will, will hurt other people around you? The Bible says, be careful lest any root of bitterness springing up defiles many. Be careful, because it's so toxic, it pollutes the ground around you. He said, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. My counsel will be to any individual going through this overwhelming stress right now to not go at it alone. Get a group of people around you. Don't isolate yourself. 
Spend time before God in worship. Go to him. Have some good godly counsel around you. And rather than accusation, I'm going to throw this. God says, vengeance is mine. Give it to him. Let him handle it. And you take care of what you can take care of. But what you can't control, you better give it to God. Because if you hold on to it, it's going to hurt your heart. It's going to affect your marriage, your family, and your future. You have to give it to God. And ultimately, forgive. Forgive. In other words, it's saying this. You owe me nothing. Owe me nothing. You owe me nothing. In fact, I'm going to pray for you and ask for God's blessing on your life. That'll change your world. There were others uh, in Hebrews. We're talking about this this hall of faith, individuals that walked in faith, and a great way to counter this, this stressful condition is to not walk in fear, but walk in God's word. So believing what God said to you, for you, in these certain situations. So, but he gets all these individuals, this individual, yeah, they shut the mouths of lions. These women, they, they received their dead back to life. They were resurrected. And there were others who were tortured, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They didn't get the promise. They had expectations they, they never saw, they never realized. Expectations, reality. Uh, they, were, they wandered in deserts, mountains, living in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. Since, I love this, God had planned something better. Something better. Listen, I know that in this lifetime you didn't get what you thought was coming to you, but you stood in faith, you didn't give up, you didn't whine too much, and God says, I want you to know better things are on the way. I don't know what better looks like but I know it's better than anything I could ask, think, or imagine. That endurance, going through some tough times, and these things, this, this bomb that went off in my world, it doesn't have to devastate my life and handicap my future. It can make me better, better. Well, how do you do that, Brad? It's by submitting to the Lord, trusting in him with all your heart, fully coming and saying, Lord, I can't carry this anymore. Jesus said this, come to me, all of you who are just completely exhausted and worn out. Just take my yoke upon you. I'm gentle and humble at heart. What he's saying is, is look, let me do what I do best. And that's carry you in this life. So give all your worries and cares to God because he really does care. Trust in him with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he'll show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom instead. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I, there's something about when you're hurt, you're wounded, you're stressed, you're depressed. Evil is magnetic. It's attractional. And when you're overly stressed, it's like you get like a, an iron heart and that evil just, it, it attracts you. And you're mad, you think, oh, I, uh, this person deserves what they got and it, it will take you down roads of evil. But you turn away from that and then you'll have healing for your body and strength for your bones. How many of you need healing in the house today? strength in the house today. When you turn away from evil, you turn to God and stop complaining and groveling and, and grumbling. Watch what God does in your life. And I'm going to close with this because confusion leads to depression that leads to accusation that leads to submission and now we have transformation. This is the beautiful part about it, that bad things can make you better. Struggles can make you stronger. Seasons of tension can make you more aware and more sensitive. 
But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same glory, same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. I love this language because he's saying, take the mask off. Don't come in just masquerading as somebody else. Be real. Get in the presence of God and watch him do his work. And you'll go from glory to glory. And that's a big word, so I looked it up. What does glory mean? I mean, people love saying glory in church. But what does it really mean? When I was, I spent two years in very severe depression. I mean, severe depression. And I remember, I remember Dr. Stewart the day that I, uh, I came through the clouds. I, I hadn't seen sunshine for a long time. Uh, yeah, there were people that turn on a light around you, but on the inside, Things were so dark, gloomy. If I could describe that shadow of the valley of death, that's what I lived in. But coming through those clouds, oh God, brightness, brilliance, radiance, and that's what glory is. This, what people who have died and had an encounter with God, they always say there's this brightness, radiance that drew me, God's presence. And you can go from glory to glory to glory, not mess to mess to mess. Let's go from glory to glory, how about it? Let's honor God with all of our life. I want to give you some questions as we close out. This comes from a, a teacher by the name of Dr. Rick Renner. I thought this was so good. To go from glory to glory, I mean, turn this ship around. How do I get out of the gloomies, out of this overwhelming stress, and into this zone with God that I'm joyful, I'm happy, and people like spending time around me? You have to ask God, have I done everything you've told me to do right now? And if not, I need to do it. Obey God. Have I made my present financial situation glorious or am I living in financial shambles? One of the best things you can do to reduce stress, very simply, get a simple plan financially that there's less money, there's less money going out than once coming in and always honor God. Have I done everything I can do to make this present stage of my life a bright and shining example to others? Or is this part of my life a, a dismal failure which, of which I'm embarrassed? What am I doing to become brighter and brighter? Have I brought this part of my life to a glorious finish? I think you can. Overcome stress. For our present troubles are what? Say that with me. Present troubles are and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory, a brilliance that vastly outweighs them all and will last forever. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that, oh Lord, the tensions, the, the stress, the anxiety, the fear, the panic, Lord, would flee away. Lord, I, I, I pray, I pray, Lord, that they would break through the clouds of confusion, depression, bitterness, and anger, and Lord, they would submit to you fully, completely. They'd go all in and say, I surrender all. And Lord, they would experience this amazing transformation where you take their struggle and make it a strength in Jesus' name. We're gonna continue to pray. But, but if you're here today, you can make eye contact with me right now. But I, this is a private moment between you and God. But if you would say, I, I'm really unsure of where I am with God, and I want to get that right first, that's your first step. Getting your heart right with God. 
So at this time, if you'll all just kind of take a moment with God, bow your head, close your eyes. And if the Lord is telling you, you need to make it right, would you do me a favor and just lift your hand up? I'll see it and you can put it down. But just, you need to make it right. Thank you over here, over here. Lots of young people, thank you over here. Just, yes, I need to, God bless you, man. Thank you over here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now you can all look up here. <clears throat> Faith is a response to God's word in my life. The same voice that told you everything's not well, and this is what you did. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, <laughs> He experienced resurrection. He rose from the dead. That that response will connect you, not just to, to God in the interim, but forever and ever. It's beautiful. And it's not a list of rules. It's a beautiful relationship. Let's pray this together. For those that raise their hand, no one prays alone. Dear Jesus, I'm in trouble. I ask you to save me. Be my savior and my Lord forever. I repent of my past. I receive your Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing my prayer and making all things new. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate the goodness of God today. Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you made a decision to follow Christ, we'd love to send you a brand new Bible and a devotional guide to help you in your new journey of faith. To get these resources or to submit a prayer request, just fill out our digital communication card by texting the word Lakeshore to 94000. We'd love to celebrate what God is doing in your life and help you with your next steps. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.